about, since I have frequency tables up, I'm going to talk about a frequency polygon. So I'm almost sick of frequency tables and it happens because we have so many different things with frequencies. <laughs> okay, good. Frequency polygon. Um, and the thing about a frequency polygon, it's a graph, obviously from a frequency table. Um, the horizontal scale has to be class midpoints, okay? I can't use class boundaries for this one. They are class midpoints and I'll show you why. And a frequency polygon, instead of bars, it has, you know, points. It has points. So I'm going to use this table, again, this frequency table, because we already have the class midpoints. We already have everything there. Um, and I'll create a frequency polygon for it real quick. So it's almost exactly the same as the histogram. There's just, you know, one little thing that's different. So one, two, three, four, five class midpoints, 46, 84, 122, 46, 84, 122, I don't remember, 160, 198, right? My class 198, my class midpoints. Um, and again, the height, heights are frequencies, very similar to a histogram. So I gotta be at least two, a two and at most a 13. So I think what I do, I counted by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 frequencies. Okay? Um, so 46.5 is the representative of the first class because I don't technically know what these values are, correct? So the class midpoint is representing this class. So there are two values from that class I'm saying. So that means I put a, a dot on my frequency polygon at you know the intersection of 46.5 and two. There's my first dot. The next one, <laughs> the next value, 84.5 is representing the representative of the second class, which has a frequency of 13. So I put a dot at the intersection of 84.5 and 13, just a dot. The next one, 10, and then three, and then three. So the next one is at 10, and then three. Oops, did I skip it? This one is 10. 10, and then three, and then three. Um, and then after you do a frequency polygon, then you go ahead and you connect the dots. So straight lines. Let's connect the dots, okay? And then you can kind of see like, you know, you can get a nice visual of what's going on on the graph. Obviously, uh, I mean, I'm gonna ask the same question. Is this normally distributed? It's not symmetric and bell-shaped, no. And it follows a similar, obviously a similar, you know, kind of feel and visualization of this one, which would make sense because it's the same table. But this is a frequency polygon. So again, what's the difference? dots instead of bars. I have to use class midpoints on the horizontal scale instead of the option of class midpoints or class boundaries. And then I connect the dots and there's my frequency polygon. Okay, not hard, right? Very, very easy. And I have a question cool. yeah. about it. Go ahead. When would you use either, like, what would you use either one for, you know? Like what's, uh, does it matter when you would use? Yeah, I mean, point? it's a way, it just depends. Sometimes it's a preference. Um, I, you know, if personally, like I, I kind of visualize a little bit better with this one than I do with this one. Um, I don't like bar graphs. Um, I'm, that's my preference. Um, the class midpoints are shown here. You might, you know, if I don't have the table, let's say uh, I don't have the, the data set, I don't have the table, I probably prefer to know the class midpoints than the class boundaries. Um, you know, preference um, between frequency polygon and, you know, histogram. Other than that, I mean, just a matter of represent, what are graphs used for? Visualization. So different ways to visualize the data, the distribution of the data. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So the next 
graph that I'm going to talk about if there are no other questions is called a dot plot. Again, these are not hard, they're not hard graphs different ways to represent different data and again it all depends on the data that I have and you know like a frequency table I can't rewrite the data set um for this one I'm gonna make up a random data set and I'm gonna make it easy two two separate that three 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 four five five seven Seven, 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 eight, eight, nine, 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 nine. Boom. There's the data set. Notice that the values are close together. Um, they're not very, very far apart. And there's a lot of repetition of them. So a dot plot is okay for this one. So to create a dot plot, I need a horizontal scale. And obviously I need to at least have a one and at most have a nine. So, you know, I'll probably count by, you know, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And a dot plot has dots. Go figure. <laughs> so let's start with one. A dot plot is nice though because you can recreate the data set if you don't already have it. So I'm going to make a dot on top of one to represent that one data value, but there's three of them. So now I have three dots vertical on top of one. I have two rep repeated twice, so now I'm going to have two dots on top of two. Notice that I want to keep organized and everything like level. So this is like row one, row two. Everybody's kind of like organized and level and, you know, not all over the place. So I'm trying to still also see the distribution. I have three represented four times. So one, two, three, four. Obviously, these you're not really going to want to create by hand. You know, you have uh, programs to do these for you, but at least you know what they are and how they created. Four. I have five represented twice, one, two, um, seven represented five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, crap. <laughs> Excuse me. Six is not there, so obviously I need to skip that. One, two, three, four, five. Eight is twice. One, two, nine is four times. One, two, three, four. So again, boom, there's my dot plot. Beautiful. Um, again, these are good if you have a lot of data values. Um, these are good if you want to recreate the data set because you can actually say, well, this is, you know, this, I can list the data set if I want to. It's good if you have repetition of values and it's good if the values are close together, right? If, you know, if I had like a hundred all of a sudden, that's not going to really help, you know, a hundred, a thousand. If I have these values all over the place, it's not really going to be wise to use a dot plot. If I don't have a lot of repeated values, it's not going to be wise to use a dot plot. Um, I'm going to say, is this and D normally distributed? And the answer is, is it symmetric and bell-shaped? Hmm. If I were to draw like a curve on top of it, it does like some craziness that does not look normally distributed. So I can still tell that. Um, thank you, Aisha. So there's a dot plot. Good time, huh? <laughs> so far, so good. Not. Yeah. So, uh, why is it not normally distributed for this one? Oh, uh, well, you want it to look symmetric and bell shaped to be normal. Oh, distributed. okay. And that does not look like that, right? I mean, if I had these values here. Kind of, and it increased, and I had the most in the middle, and then it decreased similarly that it uh, as it increased, then that would be like a symmetric bell shaped kind of curve. But it doesn't. Yeah. Matter. Yeah. I just forgot we were doing that part. My bad. That is okay. All right. Got. Yes. I'm sorry. When you say symmetric and bell shape, do they have? Do, does the sides of them have to equal the same amount, or does it just have to kind of be similar? Um, approximately similar. Yeah, not too far apart. You know. Um, let me see if I could. Uh, so here, let's look at this one. I'll try to show you in this one. So I'm gonna create what we call a. You probably have seen this, a stem plot, or a stem and leaf. I think you do it in like fifth grade. I saw my little sister do this in fifth grade, and I was like, oh, hold on. Stem and leaf plot. And I think you see them again in high school, and these show up a lot. Um, 
So a stem and leaf plot <clears throat> has a stem and a leaf <laughs> column. <laughs> Go figure. Um, so let me make up a data set for this. So I'm going to use some of this and then I don't want to go. So here, let's do, all right, 56, 56, 58. Okay, 60, 64, 64, 66, 66, 66. Um, let me do like 40 here or something. Uh, 76, 78, 78. Um, 78. And sometimes I think I had and I write what I'm thinking. Um, and then let's just do like 82. Okay, sorry if it's a little cockeyed, but um, so the leftmost column is called the stem and the rightmost column is called the leaf. And sometimes you label it as, depending on the set of data. So this set of data has two, uh, two digits, right? So the leftmost value represents the tens place and the rightmost value represents the ones place. Always make your leaf column um, the rightmost digit in your uh, set. So in this case, it would represent one. So I could actually write here ones and then as my stem write tens, and then you'll be able to interpret my stem plot if you were to go backwards. Because you can take a stem and leaf plot and create the data set if you want to, again. Um, but sometimes, you know, it is also just easier to create a scale so that everybody knows how to read it. So what I mean, all right, so I have at least 40 and up to 80. So, um, so let's start with 40s. So because my stem column represents the tens place, if I write a four in that column, it represents all my 40s. So um, since I have the number 40, I'm going to have one number in the leaf with a zero. So if I have a four in the leftmost column and a zero in the rightmost column, I interpret that as 40. If I don't have a scale or you know, an indication as to this is tens and this is ones, I will not know how to read this. It could be 400, it could be 4.0, it could be, you know what I mean? There are different ways to interpret this. So I either need to label what the stem and the leaf are or give a scale. Now that I see this scale, I can interpret the rest of the, um, the stem plot. So now if I do my 50s and I put a five here and a six here, I know that this is 56 because these are tens and these are ones or if a five is here and a six is here, it represents 56. I don't have to do it for every value, but I at least have a scale to show what it means. Um, now, I have 56 represented twice, so I need to show that twice. I do not need to separate these values with commas because any number here represents a different number in the set. In the set. That's why your, your leaf column is always the rightmost digit. Um, 58, so that means I have another number here. So I have three numbers in my 50s, 56, 56, and 58. If I have a repeated number, I show it. I'm going from least to greatest here also. Everything is nice and organized. I want these to be um, level. I want, you know, these to be level. I want everything to be nice and clean. Let's do my 60s. So I put a 6 here. That represents my 60s. I have a 60, um, a 64, a 64 a 66 and a 66 and a 66. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six values from the data set they're in the 60s. Makes sense, they're ordered from least to greatest. I'm trying to like make everything lined up and nice and even. Let's do my 70s. I have a seven and I have a 76 and a 78 and a 78 and a 78. And then I have an 82. So again, if I have a stem plot and I don't have the data set, I could recreate it if I want to because I know how to read this. Um, if I don't have the scale, again, if I don't have the scale or I don't say that the stem represents tens and the leaf represents one, I don't know how to read it. I could read it in a lot of different ways. Um, now, is it normally distributed? Well, sometimes if you turn your head to the side, and you were to draw like this curve, it kind of increases to the middle where it's the highest and then it decreases similarly that it increases. So would you say that that's normally distributed? It's not perfect, but it's approximately, yes, normally distributed. Mm -hmm. 
So even though it's not you know exactly the same a number of like 70s as 50s, it is approximately normally distributed because it increases similarly as it decreases and the center is the highest point and it follows that symmetric kind of bell shaped curve, right? So this is approximately normally distributed. Um, and that is a stem plot. Uh, 